Así que les pido que con un fuerte aplauso recibamos al elenco y al director de esta película. Y ahora sí, como dirá nuestro querido eh, Bill Hughes, it's showtime. Welcome, thank you, señor Tim Burton. Uh, vamos a dar la bienvenida a Michael Keaton. A continuación nos acompaña Jenna Ortega. Por supuesto, la maravillosa Mónica Bellucci. También Justin Turó. Fuerte aplauso. Y el productor, Tommy Harper. Un fuerte aplauso para que empecemos con esta conferencia de prensa, por favor. <laughs> Welcome, guys. You can have a seat. We're so excited to have you here. I mean, you can see here we have a girl dressed up as Lydia. <laughs> we are huge fans of, of Beetlejuice in, in, in Mexico City. So first of all, welcome to our city, a city that loves also like debt. We have a culture of that. No, we know. And uh, I want to start by um, asking you, uh, Tom, Mr. Um, and Michael, we often talk about nostalgia in movies as, as something that audiences like because they can relieve memories from when they were younger. But we don't, can I, can, we can imagine what it, nostalgia means for you, for the cast, for the crew. So I wanted to ask you how Beetlejuice has uh, followed you in your life, in your career, how he has stuck with you and somehow led you to make this movie and be a part of this movie again. Well, for me, I mean, uh, nostalgia is a strange word. I, I, I didn't look at this nostalgically. I looked at it like it was a character that, that, that I enjoyed and a world I enjoyed, and um, and it just never left me. I mean, obviously, it took like 35 years to make it again, but but it, it was like something that just felt finally after all of this time and seeing how people, you know, you get older and you go from you know, like the Lydia character going from a teenager to an adult and, you know, that's a journey we all take and it's the kind of a thing. So the idea of like making like a, a weird family movie just felt really, really right. So, so to, to me, it wasn't nostalgic. It's just I thought of it more of like a, a strange family, a weird family movie. Nice, and I think Beetlejuice really uh, manages to embrace the weirdness. So, uh, Mr. Michael Keaton, how was it for you to step back again in the set of Beetlejuice and coming uh, to create this character once again? Um, it was uh, this one, yeah, more difficult than I anticipated. Well, difficult for, for me. I was, I was a little more nervous than I actually thought I would have been. Um, it's, at the end of the day, maybe my favorite thing I've ever done uh, in film I mean, you know, that's that's always a difficult thing when people say, what is your favorite movie? I, I can't really answer that, but if someone put a gun to my head, and hopefully no one will, um, <laughs> um, uh, I, I'd say if you had to say, just go shoot something now, this very well might be it. Uh, so, so to try to do it again, I think it's because I cared about it so much that I was uh, I was nervous about trying it again you know if if it was a thing of uh you know when i when i did not to discount it at all but when i uh, did this movie the flash uh I, i just there was just one thing i wanted one specific thing i wanted to get right after that i, I wasn't that worried really about that Um, it's just a thing I, I was always liked, and nostalgia is a funny thing because I've never under, I never understood it, frankly. I, I, people say, "Well, I get nostalgic," and then one day about, I don't know what happened, but man, when it hit me, it hit me hard because now I get I get weirdly nostalgic about a lot of things, and I I never saw that coming. Yeah. Well, I mean, I felt it when I with this cast. You know, I, I felt like there's people I worked with before, people, new people, but it just felt like a weird family reunion or yeah. a weird wedding or a weird, uh, yeah, yeah, a beautiful weird event. <laughs> That's nice. And, and speaking about family, uh, a new member of this weird and amazing family is Jenna, and <laughs> and we have a question from Julieta Sanchez, Julieta, perdón. Uh, from Skyview, Mexico. I don't know if she's around, but uh, she wanted to know what challenges did you face in creating Lydia's daughter, Astrid, and giving her a personality of her own? Uh, well, I think it's pretty difficult to be related to Winona Ryder just because she's so cool and effortless in everything that she does. And Lydia, obviously, is such 
a, a, a beloved character that I think being related to her in any way was, there was naturally pressure there. But for me, I, I think it was nice because I think Astrid was written so beautifully and it's actually really easy to see where she's coming from. Uh, she's kind of embarrassed about her mom's success and fame and she misses her dad, she lost her father. Uh, they kind of have a weird relationship. She was sent off to boarding school. Uh, so f for me, it was just kind of looking more into that and then obviously bonding with Winona as much as I possibly could and we just made sure we had good chemistry and things like that, which was super easy with her. Um, so, and then I think it just kind of fell into place naturally. Was there something you did in order to like uh, create this chemistry, like something, a special activity or something? No, the, I, I think it was like three days into filming or something like that, and Winona and I sat down and finally had time to have an actual conversation. It all kind of came together so quickly, but as soon as we started talking, we just did not move. It felt like for hours, and then she would go to, we would go to her place, or she would come to mine, and then the same thing, haven't touched phones, haven't gone to the bathroom, had a drink of water, anything. It was it was incredible. It just we can't stop. That's amazing. Yeah, I think with Jane on, on screen the chemistry that you both have. And uh, Monica, many people have seen the poster and made so many theories about your character. <laughs> so many theories. Uh, but we have a question from Gustavo Hernandez from Cinemex that he asked what was it to like to prepare what was it like to prepare for entering Tim Burton's uh, world and specifically stepping into this role, mysterious role of Dolores. Dolores. Uh, Dolores is a soul-sucking demon. <laughs> <laughs> we can say much because I know there are some journalists they haven't seen the movie yet. All I can say is that, that Tim told me I have a key role in this movie um, for which I thought about you. And, um, and of course I was very happy to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> to play it, we should ask why he thought about me. Actually, I think this role is soul sucking. Soul sucking. <laughs> and um, typecast. All, all, yeah, all I can say is that I'm really honored to be part of this amazing cast, really, and enter into Tim's world. So beautiful, poetic, and um, magical. So I'm part of the new characters. Like you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, we're so happy to be here. Thank you. And I love how you mentioned it, and Monica, like entering Steam World, because I, I believe it's like a whole fantasy to be a part of, of Tim Burton's uh, movie to enter his mind. And Justin, you are also becoming part of, of this character in the movie. And I think that uh, Tim's character are anything but ordinary. And although your character, it's a little bit aside from the Deeds family and he can kind of judge what they're doing, he also has some traits of his own. So how was it for you to create this character that it feels like normal but weird at the same time? He's maybe the most normal of them. I mean, uh, <laughs> kind of, maybe aside from you know Astrid. Um, <laughs> But you know, it was great. You know, it's 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 one of my favorite things to play, sort of comedically, which is shallow and stupid, um, and and sort of not very bright. And and add to that, there was sort of this emotional component to him, which I really just found hilarious. But and then touching on the nostalgia part, being a new member of the cast and being able to, and being a huge fan of the movie originally, to be able to walk onto it, I was you know overwhelmed by those sets and just sort of the imagination that had gone into them and the, all the characters. And, the, and frankly, the script was incredible. So it's a fabulous experience. But I mean, all these people really, I had just jump in, because the script was good, but everybody really added to it. That was the beautiful thing for me, was like in the spirit of the first one, there was a lot of improv, there was a lot of uh, people really on a daily basis coming up with things on the set. So for me, the, the energy was fantastic. and. That, again, made it creative and fun and, I guess you might say, nostalgic. I don't know. <laughs> and, and something interesting is that this movie is going to be seen by a uh, new generation. I mean, I think we have different generations here who grew up with, with this, the first Bill Hughes movie. So uh, this is a question for you, Tommy. How did you work in the production area to ensure that the movie was going to keep that quirky look but also appeal to new generations? Well, we follow Tim's lead, so you know we kind of it's a, it's about allowing space to create and um, giving the original fans 
a little bit taste of what they remember from the first film, but also making it new and original for the, uh, the, the incoming fans that haven't seen the, ri the original film. So I think it's just about um, hitting the right buttons and, and letting people kind of get back into the world of Beetlejuice and then throw a little sprinkle of some new items in. But it's really following Tim's lead throughout. Amazing. And I mean, it's been more than 30 years, but Michael, uh, we have a question from uh, El Sol from Belen Eligio. He wants to know how has your relationship with the character Bill just evolved through the years? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, I was not ready for that. I love this, I love this question because it makes me worry about myself. <laughs> yeah. well, well, the great thing about him, it, uh, the being, is he, he kind of does evolve and he kind of doesn't, you know? He's kind of the best and worst of everything. So, um, you know, just to re reiterate something and then I, I promise I'll get to that. You know, um, I also, I would put in that it, up there, but not. It's it's a it's a little bit of a dissimilar thing. When I did Birdman, Birdman was in in, in Ratu. Uh, uh, it, so it was that experience wasn't. You couldn't compare. You just can't compare it to other experiences, you know. So without sounding too arty, uh, uh, it, it's true art because you're you, you don't have a choice but to be part of it, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's, and I like it like this also, I like, I like teams, so I like when, it, when it's clear. The director does that, the producers do that, the actors do that, I, I actually like that. This is not like that. <laughs> this, is, this is a true like art experiment, you know, uh, uh, a controlled art, art, art experiment, and where, where, like Tim says, everybody had an idea. You know, and, and he welcomes it. And it's such a fun environment to be in when that happens because you're not discounted. You know, you're not, you might have a lousy idea, but it's an idea because you feel free to, free to do it. So as that pertains to the question, I'm not quite sure, but, <laughs> but, but you, you have to, it sounds on, on one hand silly to even discuss them because to be really honest with you, I could, I guess I could see, get uh, actory about it, but it, the great thing about playing this thing was I didn't have to. It was, I mean, I guess I discount that sometimes in interviews too much, because I certainly thought about it, because I, I think about everything I do. I, it, it comes from, something has to come from, it, everything I do has to come from something, some idea, some thought. So when we met, he only said a couple of key things, and he and I were kind of, he was trying to explain it, but also it was a bit of a free form at the beginning, right? So I, when Tim hit me with a couple of things, I went, oh, okay, let me, that's, that gives me some sort of, sort of an idea. So how it, how, how it evolves is, it's the same thing, because he's kind of, a key thing is he comes from any time, place, dimension, world, you know what I mean? Which totally frees you, frees you up, just gives you total freedom. So in a way, you say, that's the same thing. It's not like, well, he's older now, you know? <laughs> you know, he's matured, I guess. Wiser. He's wiser. <laughs> yeah, which is so fucking fun to not have to worry about. <laughs> you know? But Michael, I, I would say, to what you're saying, for me, it's a character, why you can't describe it, because it kind of comes from the subconscious. Yes. It's, it's kind of like, you don't sit there, it's like discussing a dream. I mean, we, can, we discuss dreams, I mean, we discuss dreams all the time, but to actually discuss a character in a... Uh, like, what's his motivation? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind of stuff. yeah. Forget about it. Right, right, <laughs> right. It's true. Like, I always joke, I say the most fun thing was I never at once would ask the question, say, make the statement, well, my character wouldn't do that. <laughs> my, char <laughs> my character could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a great freedom as an oh, actor. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it sounds so surreal as well, uh, stepping into this world. And Jenna, this is the, the second time you get to collaborate with Tim. And it's also the second time you collaborate with him in such an iconic title, right? So, of course, there are like a lot of expectations from the audience, from everyone. But I wanted to ask you, how do you manage your own expectations when you uh, have to be a part of something like this big? Oh, well, I try not to think about it because then I think mm -hmm. I would like, <laughs> collapse and then not show up or something like that. But um, no, I 
the iconic part, you know, I think that's more of Tim's thing. I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. And uh, I think all I could do is just try my best and show up and make sure I did my homework, which is easy when, you know, you have such a, in, an incredible film to look back to and refer to when creating something like this. Um, I, I mean, if anything, it's really exciting to see how excited other people get about it or, you know, how engaged people are and how, how such a strange movie has touched so many people. So I think for me, more so the, the worry is making sure that we're doing it right, that we're as silly as possible, as campy as possible, which is really, really easy to do when you show up to work and there's a guy with his, set, with his head sitting on the couch next to him. <laughs> Or, you know, you're trying to do your coverage and the camera's in your face, but you're having to lean more to the left because the ground is built like this. You know, I think it was quite easy, actually, to, you know, play and <laughs> be a part of the world once you were there. But she fit, like, like man, like a glove. Like, it's not as e uh, I don't mean to speak for you, but I, don't, I would guess it's not as easy to do. You know, Winona and, you know, they're somewhat gr grounded, you know, Kind of, you know, Catherine's eccentric, and Justin and all the other characters. But that's that's not an easy thing to do and to get the the tone. What I noticed when she showed up said she just gets this. She just totally understands how to how to how to be in this thing. Just you know, which is I don't think an Thanks. easy thing to do. Yeah, no, I I will say I don't that think anybody else did. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was so confused. Um, <laughs> so confused. Also, what I'll, what I'll say about this one that I think uh, people might really enjoy, but I personally enjoyed, especially getting to play that out with Winona, is there's a little bit more of an uh, emotional, heartfelt quality to this one, I think. There's more of a through line, so that kind of was my role, I guess, is in the middle of everything to kind of help ground things or you know make things relatable and personable for people. So I think that was really the main struggle, is making sure I got that right, and it didn't feel like uh, bad you know, dramatic acting in the middle of something that is supposed to be fun and entertaining and exciting. The dramatic essence, right? Uh, right. How to manage that. Well, it, well, you did it. Amazing. Congratulations. Yes, yes. And we have a question for uh, Monica from Aaron Navarro de La Crónica de Hoy. Um, well, we mentioned that you are a villain, uh, Simon uh, Soul Sucker. Right, but say, he wants to know. I don't say this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say she's a demon. She's a demon. <laughs> no, although I can say that she has scars, and we all have emotional scars. And she's a metaphor in some way. But in Tim's movie, there are always deep subjects, even though this is a comedy, a dark comedy, but still a comedy in some way. But there are always deep subjects as life, death, love. Because team knows how to create situations that are scary and, um, and unpredictable and shocking. But at the same time, uh, even situations that are full of emotion. And um, so he knows how to create and to make different feelings. I think that, that that question was uh, what inspired you to bring her to life, and I think that's the answer, right? Um, what inspired me that um, she comes from so much pain, mm -hmm. but some way she comes back, <laughs> full of scars. <laughs> <laughs> And Justin, we have a, another question for you from Ruby uh, from Oye89.7. Uh, he wants to know what was it like to enter the world of video use because it's a movie that has like a really unique aesthetic and quirks. It's weirdly an aesthetic I love. Like I love black clothing and I love, you know, sort of, you know, that, but it, it's just a completely heightened, you know, insane version of it. So as I said before, to sort of step into it after having observed it or you know, seen it reflected in pop culture for so long or and obviously being a huge fan of Tim's work writ large. Um, it was just, you know, kind of incredible, you know, and, you know, everyone sort of has their own little movie happening within this movie. You know, everyone has their own very, very, very specific point of view. And again, that's large credit due to the script, Tim's vision. Um, so it's just kind of fun. It was, kind of, you know, and it's it is so fully realized. And you know, there's been much said about the practicality of the the sets and the effects and all the rest of it. So you're really getting to do the things. You know, when when Michael's you know opening up his 
sweater and his guts are spilling out. You can r literally feel the gel hitting your body and, you know, and all the rest of it. So it's not something where they're like, hey, when this, when we show this, it's going to look like this. It really was looking like this. I was like obsessed. Yeah, yeah it's a peculiar one. It's, it was just fun. I love it. And you have mentioned so many details. And this is a question again for our t a team from Pamela Cortez de La Cine Mafia. Uh, since you are a filmmaker who has a deep love for Mexico, a country which actually has a profound connection to death, how has this inspired you, uh, your work, inspired your work on the film and throughout your career? Yes. Um, well, I think, listen, I think this film in particular is, uh, it kind of is, we were talking about this last night at dinner. It's, it's a perfect setup for being here, for starting the tour here because all the great visuals um, that kind of you can lean into Mexico and lean into the vibe of it all. And as Justin was saying, every day showing up on the film and just walking in and seeing the great sets and costumes and the actors uh, is a gift. And so we just want to give it to the world and we love being here. And I think kind of having the vibe of, of the entire film and um, letting it and showing 20 plus minutes of it here and uh, getting everybody's excitement around it is very special to us. Okay, and, and Michael, as I mentioned in the introduction of this press conference, we only get to see 17 minutes of your character and that was more than enough to make him an icon. <laughs> I mean, not more than enough, like I cannot stand this guy, just more than enough to make him an icon. Uh, it, it was the, the best 17 minutes, I guess. It was, they were the best. But you know what I mean, you know what I mean about him? <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, was there something you were eager to explore in the first film that you were able to do in the second one? Um, you know, we, I had such, I keep saying this, you know, like he, he didn't have any parameters. He knew exactly, Tim knew exactly what he wanted all, always. It's very clear, actually. So I keep saying I had the freedom to do anything. Well, you, you know, you're within the boundaries of this world, do you know what I mean? So, no, the, it was really more, and in fact, I'll tell you the truth. In this one, I find, I'm pretty sure if I really went back and looked at it, yeah, there's a ton of impro improvisation and a ton of, I just create things, and Tim either, either says yes or no, mostly yes, because it'll spur an idea in his head, you know, or Catherine will come up with something. And so there was all of that, all that, you know, creation on the spot, but the script was actually was actually quite good going in. In this case, and I'm not saying it uh, false humility because I don't frankly have any false humility. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. It's really spread out in 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 the story and the cast more more so without without giving too much away. I mean, yeah, he's he is what he is. Uh, you know, he is what he is. He's that anarchic force. But but there's more. There's there's, I don't want to say more to go around, but everything has a, a little bit more. As, uh, all the other characters and the rest of the storylines resonate, I think, a little more. First of all, I was kind of surprised at how, how emotional it is to kind of toward that. It's very kind of heartwarming in, in spots. Not too much. <laughs> Not too much. Don't get too excited. Uh, but but no, you know, just just uh, kind of show up, and do you know, do do it, the function like you're supposed to function. But really, it was you know, wasn't. I, it's not, I don't want to say I didn't have to carry the weight, but I didn't, I didn't have to carry the weight in the first one. It was it, it's it spread out a lot more in terms of folks stepping up and doing what they do. All right, and Jenna, there's a line that Astrid has that is I think I it's fascinating. She says like something like. The afterlife is so random. And I think that you're going to be also the voice for a new generation who maybe hasn't seen uh, Beetlejuice. So I wanted to ask you, how do you think that this movie is going to reach a uh, new generation? Oh, man. Um, that's such a good question. Well, I'm trying to think. Well, I think there's something... I think a lot of people are fascinated by death and what happens you know, after. And uh, we live kind of in a strange time right now. So I think that for young people who aren't familiar with the original film and maybe aren't used to seeing something um, so uh, kind of 
creative and, and um, heightened and uh, funny, but still talking about serious issues like that, I think it's really sweet and a really good balance of, you know, it's a good way to laugh at it and the fact that it's gonna happen to everyone. Um, so I think, I mean, I don't know that I would say I'm the voice of the next generation or anything, oh, but yes. I feel, I feel, <laughs> I feel, I, I feel really, really grateful to be a part of this because I feel like this is what young people need nowadays. And you know, we want to keep movie theaters alive, and we want people to watch. And uh, I think with something like this, it, it's something that's for everyone. You could watch it with your parents, you could watch it with your friends, you could watch it multiple times. There are so many random things. Yeah. That, dogs. yeah. There are dogs. Yeah, you can watch with your dogs. <laughs> yeah, you can watch it with your dogs. Um, Tim can watch it with our dogs. You know, I just happened to notice some things fell off. <laughs> fell off of Beetlejuice's face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Spitting image. Yeah. No. <laughs> but it's true. It's for everyone, for everything. Like, you could watch it a million times and still not pick up on all the little, you know, details in the film. So I think there's something about that where it's that you could just go back and back and uh, it never gets old, which I think is really uh, exciting for young people to see. It is. And speaking about the details, as a final question for uh, Mr. Tim Burton, this is from uh, Los Cuarenta. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the return of practical effects. How did uh, the, film the filmmakers, everyone here, decided which scenes would benefit most from using practical effects and which one would might be better to oh. use uh, CGI? Well, I don't think we used any CGI. I mean, we, we did, we kind of did, um, look, we went through the thing of like doing everything practical. And even when we didn't do it, like, it wasn't really CG. We just do old fashioned kind of uh, matting, you know. So we, went, we really didn't do anything that we didn't do on the first one. We didn't, the, 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 the I can't recall any CG at all. We just, we just, because like, like Justin said, it was important to the spirit of the film that everybody got in there and felt it. And it just made it more emotional. It made it more personal. It made it more fun. It made it more, like I said, in the spirit of, of, of the first one. I mean, I didn't even watch the first one in making this one. I just went and did it feeling like, feeling the characters and feeling the people and feeling it. And I really didn't, uh, I didn't, because I, if I felt like, I started to look at it, I go like, I didn't understand it to begin with. So what am I gonna learn from this? And I made it, so <laughs> I, you know, so I'd rather just kind of treat it like it's something emotional, but made it feel new, but using all those same techniques. So that was just, again, part of, part of the spirit of it. So that made it easier for everybody, the actors, to comment on, oh, you know, and, and just made it more present. It made it more like we were there actually making something instead of thinking about what it was going to look like later. Yeah. And, you know, early on, pardon me, when he and I, you know, through the years, we would go, what do you think? Should we, you have any interest in doing it again? There were those conversations. The consistent thing, the one consistent thing was don't, not too much technology, you know. I just knew it. I just knew it. I, and, and, and Tim said, "Don't worry, that's never going to happen." But there was always an agreement. If we ever did it again, it had to be handmade because I don't think people consciously understood when they first saw it. Now I think they do actually, but I don't think they consciously understood what it was about about how the, you know, the attraction. You know, first of all, it was just really creative and fun to watch and funny, but, but. I don't think people consciously understood what they were drawn to exactly. You know what I mean? Because that's a hard thing. You removed a little bit as brilliant as things like you know, these movies I see. I mean, I'm, I'm in the business, and I don't understand how certain things are done in movies I look at. I, I, it's mind-blowing, the technology. Just unbelievable. But you know, there's a tiny, tiny separation, if you ask me. There's a subconscious, tiny little bit distance. Uh, you know, I think we're all... We, we don't even know it now, but I, I believe so deep there is. In this, you don't, you can't put your finger on it. But, and and so for us to be, to be in the environment, it, I can't tell you how much fun it is out of the corner of your eye. You know, see somebody like with fishing line pulling something. You know, like cat's tail. yeah, like a cat's tail. It's just the most fun. <laughs> you know, it's like being a kid. You know. Well, I think everyone in this room, or at least I hope, are going to enjoy this amazing movie, Bill Use, Bill Use, that it's basically a, a celebration of the eccentric, the weird, the, the beautiful, of the beauty of life as well. Like all of you. Like all of you. Uh, and also a reminder 
that even in the afterlife, we can have some laughter, mischief, and a little bit of darkness. So in the mood of Beetlejuice, uh, Beetlejuice and to get this uh, day started and your visit to Mexico, well, let's say it's showtime. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Otro aplauso. Thank you so much, guys.